we would like to let you know that we are having an extended Sunday school lesson this morning. So uh, you are welcome to join us. I will pray that God, who has been blessing us from the beginning, he will continue to bless us. We we'll listen to the tune, 496, and we all sing all the uh, verses sitting down, after which we will follow up whatever the ministry have for us, for the continuation of the lesson. Soldiers of Christ, rise! Soldiers! hundred eighty one. When God is counting those who love the Lord, may God count us to be one of them. Six eight one.
Amen. Amen. May the Lord please count us among the faithful ones Amen. that will make heaven at last. Amen. Okay, um, as it's been announced, we're just continuing our extended Sunday school. We've looked at two points majorly, and actually we started the third point just before the break. And that point is on whether or not the children of Israel were to blame for um, the failure of Moses and Aaron. We need to do some more reading, and we will also want to take more contributions because we will all look at it differently. So uh, we want to hear from your perspective if you think that the children of Israel had a part to play um, in this um, harvest of failure. Let's look at Numbers chapter 20, our reading portion. Numbers chapter 20, and we're going to read from verse 12 to verse 13, and then from verse 22 to verse 29. Num and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, because ye believe me not, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have promised them. 13. Which, which I have given them. Which I have given them. This, 13, this is the water of Meribah because of the children of Israel's troop with the Lord, and he was sanctified in them. Okay, from verse 22 to verse 29. 22. And the children of Israel, even the whole congregation journeyed from Kadesh and came unto Mount Or. 23. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in Mount Or by the coast of the land of Edom, saying, 24, Aaron shall be gathered unto his people, for he shall not enter into the land which I have given unto the children of Israel, because ye rebelled against my word at the water of Meribah. 25. And, sorry. Take Aaron and Eleazar his son, and bring them up unto Mount Or, and strip Aaron of his garments, and put them upon Eleazar his son. And Aaron shall be gathered unto his people, and shall die there. 27. And, Aaron, and Moses said, and Moses did as the Lord commanded, and they went up on, and they went into Mount Or in the sight of all the congregation. 28. And Moses stripped Aaron of his garments and put them upon Eleazar his son. And Aaron died there in the top of the mount. And Moses and Eleazar came down from the mount. 29. And when all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead, the mount for Aaron, 30 days, even all the house of Israel. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's um, just continue our previous discussion on um, <clears throat> whether or not the children of Israel were to blame for this failure of Moses and Aaron. I think one thing we, we, um, the passage we've read has clearly clarified for us is um, whether or not Aaron was part of this failure. I think that is quite clear in the place that we are afraid. Um, because God said, he, when he called Moses and Aaron together in verse 12, ye believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. So Aaron was equally culpable. So let's look at it. Um, <clears throat> let's hear your perspective to it. Were they part of this um, um, issue? Were, were they to blame? Thank you, Sister Muriel. I would say they were to blame, and also the children of Israel were to blame. Because when you are working in something like there's a leadership, and also you are among the people that are working with them, you know about the rules, and you know also you have to help them to achieve their leadership too. So in that case, the children of Israel failed to help Moses and Aaron. But that doesn't mean that Aaron and Moses have to fail in their part towards God. 
So that's where Moses and Aaron also failed because they were decided, I would say, by what was happening among the children of Israel. They got hungry and they reacted to it. As Moses should have just, even if he was blaming the children of Israel, he should not have bring it towards God. So that's where he was to blame too. Okay. I think that is something called misplaced anger also. That's the point you're making. Yes, Brad Femi. Well, we, we've um, already said that uh, Moses is no more now, and the children of Israel are no more now. But what is important is we that are here. Mm. And uh, the Bible says in the book of um, Ezekiel chapter 18, I will just read only one verse there. Oh, that's two verses. It says, uh, verse 23, it says, Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? Seeth the Lord God. And not that he should return from his ways and live. Verse 24. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committed iniquity and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he has done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass that he has trespassed and in sin that he has sinned, in them shall he die. Thank you, sir. And I see us as Christians generally, including the leaders, as a dangerous species. Hmm. Means that for us, it doesn't matter what we've done in the past. What matters is what we are doing at the, time, at the time of the return of Christ. Moses is no more now. Yeah, we, just like you have said, that most of the uh, places we have read about him, God said, you should go and do this, he did it. God just said, go and do this, he did that. But the last one that he said he should do that, he did not do, and that was the, the, the reason why he didn't get to the, the promised land. And I just pray that because each time I read this passage, I just look at myself as, Lord, please help me. Mm. I need your mercy. Amen. The Bible says that the, 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 and the, the, the danger of it is that even those that are outside there that are not Christians, the Bible says that their un, unrighteousness will be forgotten, that they will not even know that they have they they been unrighteous before. The moment they turn back to God. Yeah. But what of those that are already in God, that's already in Christ Jesus? That is so important. Because Moses has been working with God for so long, mm. but just one unrighteousness. Mm. Deny him the, the, the promised land. Yeah. Let that not be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. God that bless you, the, sir. The, the righteousness <clears throat> of the, the unrighteousness of the righteous, the moment it, it turns back, you know, it's very dangerous. Yeah. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Who oh, defended Moses? Uh, we should not provoke our leaders. Whatever, if we say we are praying for our leaders, we cannot do the same. We cannot be criticizing our leaders and be praying for them at the same time. But it is our duty to pray for our leaders. Because Amen. when you don't, God will allow you to become a leader as well. Yeah. And then you will have a feel of what you have been doing. Thank you, May sir. May God help us. Because Amen. we all want to make heaven. Yes. God Thank will help you. us God. to pray for our leaders. Amen. God bless you. Let's quickly look at Titus chapter 2 from verse 7 to verse 8, please. Titus chapter 2. From verse 7 to verse 8, very quickly. Thank you, Rabanji. 7. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. In mm. doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. 8. Sound speech that cannot be condemned. Mm. That he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Thank you. Verses, um, uh, no. Let's see chapter 3, verse 2, please. 3, verse 2. Yeah. To speak evil of no man, mm. to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. Thank you. How do we handle provocation when it comes? When we are pushed to the wall? Based on these verses that we've read, I can see hands, but they are hands that are very familiar, so I'm looking for just one person before I round up. To, okay, Sister Esther. At the back. Well, you were asking if who is to be blamed. Uh, well, I've gone past that. <laughs> we've, we've concluded on that. I'm now looking at how do we handle provocation? Well, like, like everyone had said, we need to have prayed up because to me, 
everybody, we are all responsible for our actions. God bless you. And if um, uh, somebody provoked me and I said what I shouldn't have said, it's not that person's fault. It's for me to know how to you know, behave under pressure. Because like, as a manager at work, you have no right to say something that you're not meant to say or to misbehave just because your team members said something that you are not happy about. And I believe that God was expecting, you know, like Moses and Aaron, they were like leaders representing God. And God was expecting them to have like, maybe I should say like extra grace. Mm -hmm. And they were like to be able to show to the children of Israel, like we have all said, that they can work under pressure. And by the, by the grace of God, if you have prayed up and you've got that extra grace that God has for us, and, you know, you will be able to know how to handle things in situation. God it's not you. easy, yeah. but God can help us to be able to do it. Amen. God bless you. You know, we have such a wonderful opportunity this month of January that we are praying. This is a time to bank up prayers. You know... Um, your Meriba, your water of Meriba, it's most likely going to be different from mine. And most probably, yours and mine will not be as big and um, quite easily seen as Moses' own. It might just be something very little. God will just test our faithfulness. The prayer we need to pray, all of us, is that when we get to that water of Meribah, may God be available for us. Amen. And may we will avail ourselves Amen. of the availability of God. In closing, I'll just read this, because we're going to have a review of the lesson now, and that's going to be on the webcast. Um, all our branches in mainland Europe are going to be hooked up to us in the next one minute or so. So Brazy could be coming up. Now, brash and hasty speech has no place in the life of a saint of God. It doesn't matter what the provocation is. The business of a Christian is to live close to God so that in his life, divine graces such as unselfishness, meekness, kindness, charity, patience, and other virtues could daily be seen and felt by people. As with the children of Israel, our actions have consequences. So let us open our hearts to God get his direction, and keep on marching. We learn from the lesson of Moses and Aaron that we may serve God faithfully all the days of our lives, but in the moment of indiscretion, looking away from God to the lives of ungodly men and women and taking matters into our own hands, we can lose a great deal. We can lose the very thing we have spent our lives striving for. We can lose the very captive of the blessing and God's best for us, we can even do worse. Because in disobeying God, we sin and we might, as a result, lose our salvation and even lose heaven at last. We just thank God that in the case of Moses, God had mercy on him and took him to heaven. You know that even the Bible tells us that the devil still strove for his body. After Moses died, the devil wanted to lay claim on him. But we thank God that God did not allow. May God keep you and I together in the faith. God bless you. We will take another song before we come for the review. And that's going to be number 16. One, six. CGS 16. We just take two verses, one and two, before Jehovah's overthrow.
Thank you so much, Brother Francis, for this um, important lesson. And I want to say thank you to everybody also for your contributions. I would like to start with a prayer that may we not be excluded Amen. from heavenly Canaan. Amen. May we not cause anyone to be excluded Amen. from heavenly Canaan. Amen. And may we not cause God to exclude anyone Amen. from heavenly Canaan. We are all learning together. It's a lesson of love from God. I see it like that. To have a lesson or series of lessons like this for the beginning of the year when we have decided to consecrate, to sacrifice, to pray, and God himself saw fit to give us some lessons like this during this devoted period of prayers. I took note of that, and it's like God saying, I want you to make it. Amen. I believe that is the message Amen. that God is sending to me and to you. I want you to make it. Amen. I don't really want anybody to miss it. It's a mirror, the mirror of truth that you are to look into, I am to look into. And when we look into that, we make amends, we repent, sinners and saints, Amen. to repent all together. And at the same time, it's like God saying, I have set before you life and death. And I will advise you to choose life. However, I'm not going to force you to do so. I will lay those two paths before you, and you can make a choice. And it is my prayer that God will help us to choose life. Amen. May we repent genuinely. We don't want to be caught up in the cycle of disobedience. There is a cycle whereby you disobey God, you pray for repentance, you disobey again, you pray for repentance, you disobey again, you pray for repentance. When we get to a level where God will say, enough is enough. We don't want to push to that extent. That was the problem of the children of Israel, or the Israelites. They got used to murmuring. They got used to complaining. They got used to grumbling. It started to run in the blood. It entered the blood. It entered the veins of the blood. Every part of them, every part of the body, this attitude, this behavior, entered into it, and it's a problem to now get it out. Mm -hmm. They had that problem of um, grumbling against their leader, but ultimately, as we have learned, against God. Almost everything they complained about. No water, no food, they want position. The way they are governing is, not, is too much. Have we not learned all that together? Is that not the kind of thing they are saying? Are you the only leader? God can speak to us too. We know the answer to you. You know the I can do it better fallacy. That was troubling their heart, troubling their mind. And God was looking. And Moses would cry to God in their behalf, and God would come down from heaven and would spare them. They did everything to really cause big problem until God then said, no more. Your carcasses will be bleached in this wilderness. You are not going to see this land that I've promised you. In this, my review, I want you to note a statement, which even if you forget everything, take home with you. Defiled people will defile the camp. That's true. Defiled people, they defile the camp. These people are already defiled. Their own case is already settled as far as God is concerned. We have learned that. Where God had said, 
when Moses prayed for them, you remember this problem they had? It's not new. They've been having it. They got to a stage when Moses prayed for them and God replied from heaven. God said, I have answered your prayer, but when God says, I've answered, but, that but got to the consequences. That but got to, yes, I will do this thing, but you are going to suffer. You are going to really suffer for what you are doing. Con um, defilement is contagious, just like sin is contagious. Imagine, let, let's, let's look at that, uh, the contagious part of this defilement that was already running in the camp among the children of Israel. You can imagine when it even affected Miriam and Aaron. It was because the camp, the camp is already defiled. Even the family members of Moses, they were against Moses. Because the camp was already defiled and everything was going on underneath, affecting one thing or the other. So perhaps Miriam and Aaron didn't know when they rebelled too. So it's not just a question of um, co-leaders. They were co-leaders, but family members, they rebelled. These people got used to rebellion and murmuring that even when they had good reports, it did not matter to them. May we not get to that level Amen. where we will hear the good news that we can be free from whatever is troubling us. May we just come to church and sit down with the same spirit, with the same mind, with the same attitude, no changes, nothing whatsoever. It's a dangerous ground. All the congregation will land. They cried to the extent they said, let's make captain. Let's return to Egypt. We don't have trust in this leadership again. We don't have trust in God again. That's what they were saying. And Moses prayed for them, and God heard, and God added that but. But did they really take heed when, they, when that happened to them? No. Remember what I said? Defiled people, they defiled the camp. People like Korah, they didn't know when the spirit got to them too a co-minister, a Levite, and the princes, and the captains. Because the camp is already defiled, it's eating up everybody. When that thing that eats up everyone is going around and it gets to your heart, to your soul, to you, to your camp, may you run away from it. Amen. May you reject it. Amen. If you play with it, before you know it, you find yourself inside it. Because I want to believe perhaps people like Korah, they just didn't know that they can get to that level. People that are famous. And we want to pray that may the Lord please cleanse our soul. Amen. Cleanse our life. Amen. Cleanse our family. Amen. Cleanse our camp. Amen. Cleanse our church. Amen. If we remain defiled before we know it, our Aaron's and Moses, they will be pushed to a level I'm sorry We shall not be pushed. Amen. We shall not be pushed. Amen. This lesson is for me. This lesson is for you. People are pushing us vehemently, terribly, with all the forces they know. Defiled people, they defile the camp. Yeah. God eventually resolved 
this grumbling issue, and God is going to resolve our issue. Amen. God will resolve this issue. Amen. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart, Amen. because the people of God are praying. God resolved leadership issues to dissolve grumbling issue. Aaron's rod was boarded. Yeah. I don't know what the Lord would do. Yeah. He will make Aaron's rod to board again. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. In a way that he will convince the gainsayer, yeah. the hardened one, the one that just won position by all means, come what may, it is mine. I must get it. God is going to resolve it. Amen. Having been excluded from Canaan, these people, they determined their leaders too must be excluded. They didn't know that that's what they were doing. They frustrated their leaders. They do everything they could do. And we read from the book of Psalm 106. Psalm 106. Huh? I read verses 32 and 33. They angered him also at the waters of strife, so that it went ill with Moses for their sakes, because they provoked his spirit, so that he spake unadvisedly with his lips. May God help us. Amen. And you see the reason why we need to pray for people. Why we need to pray for ourselves. All such people in your congregation, those of you listening to me, they are in every congregation. We have them. We need to pray for such people. Such people are called sandpaper people. I used to be um, a plumber. And when we need to join two pipes together, copper pipes, we use sandpaper to smoothen very well the um, copper pipe that you want to join together to solder together to make it shine. Or this kind of thing when we want to make it to shine. You first of all use some paper. They are only some paper people preparing us to be shined by God. Amen. When you have people like that in your family, in your life, in your church, in your workplace, may God give that grace from above. Amen. To see them that they are using, they are being used to prepare you for something special. Amen. Some paper people, they are being used to smoothen us so that we can be smooth, and then God will apply the gloss Amen. of beauty by the grace of God. Amen. Just think about it. About a month after leaving Egypt, these people had a test. They, they had a test called, which I called for myself, thirsty test. They were thirsty. They had that test, and they murmured, and Moses prayed for them, and they filled God, but God provided for them. God told Moses, take your rod. Go and strike the rock. That was just about a month, about a month after they left Egypt. And Moses went to strike the rock, and water came out, and the place was called Massa and Meribah. You know, that was found in the book of Exodus 17, when our text of this morning says that in Exodus, in Numbers 20, 13, that this is that water of Meribah. They came back there again after about 38 years. The test that you've been running away from, that you failed, because God loves you, 
he will bring it again. Yeah. And when he brings it again, may you not fail. Amen. Because that may be the last opportunity. Yeah. They got to the same spot again. Of course, this is now a new generation. But they have not learned anything from their fathers. Their fathers were rebellious. Their fathers were grumblers, murmurers, complainers. I think I had it in one of the contributions this morning. The blood has been transferred from the father to these children that have now grown. You know, we live in a wanting world. We live in a world where we must expect to meet with some inconveniences and other things, but we just want to trust God. But here again, these same people, they spoke the same absurd and brutish language. The same word they spoke that their fathers had done before them, they were as bad as their father that went before them, murmuring, ran in the blood. And the effect of that can be terrible. They quarrel with Moses. They forgot the tenderness and faithfulness of Moses. Even, you know, the, first, the very first verse of our text says that Miriam just died. In verse 1, Numbers 20. Instead for them to be consoling, instead for them to feel for uh, Aaron and Moses, who had just lost their sister, they didn't remember that. They were still complaining. They add affliction to their grief. You know, this passage, Numbers 20, is a very strange passage, yet very instructive. Yes, anybody can look at that and say, this is not for us. This is not for the congregation. It is for the leaders. I accept that with all my heart. And I want God to teach me valuable lesson Amen. from this particular lesson. But for a true child of God, you better take it that it is for you too. Yes. It is immaturity that makes people to push things that God is giving them to learn from to other people. Take it for yourself. This is for me. If you are not a pastor or a leader today, you're going to be one tomorrow. God can make that to happen. And even if you are not one, as we have said several times, leadership in this case is not just only pastors. We have so many leaders, even in your house. You know, reading this um, passage of the scripture, it was really uncertain what was so provoking to God. Their fault was complicated. And that's why we've been trying to see what we can learn. It was certain, too, that God was greatly offended. And he was just. For he's never angry without a cause. That's why Moses also declared that he was wroth with me in Deuteronomy 3, 25 and 26. God was really angry. What was it? All we could read here was God said, Speak to the rock. But in their anger, in their frustration, in their being pushed to the wall, instead of speaking to the rock, they spoke to the people. And little did they know, number one, bah! Number two, bah! Which God did not order them to do. And that's what we read in our verse 12. God then made it very clear. You did not sanctify me. You did not give me the glory. You did not believe me. When I say that defiled people will defile the camp, even to the leadership level, if you don't pray very well, they were rebellious, and eventually they turned Moses and Aaron also to rebels. Numbers 27. Let us quickly read that together. Numbers 27. Numbers 27. 
from verse 12, I read, And the Lord said unto Moses, Get thee up into this month Abirim, and see the land which and see the land which I have given unto the children of Israel. And when thou hast seen it, thou also shalt be gathered unto thy people, as Aaron thy brother was gathered. For ye rebelled against my commandment in the desert of Zin, in the strife of the congregation, to sanctify me at the water before, your, before their eyes. That is the water of Meribah in Kedish, in the wilderness of Zin. They turned them also to rebels. They were rebels already. May the rebels not turn you to rebels. Amen. That takes determination. For if you are not careful, the rebels will win you to their side. In one way or another. Well, somebody can say, we can be saying that um, they call these people rebels. Let us try and understand this. It is true that Moses... And Aaron, they said, you rebels. They called them rebels. Actually, the Bible, not, nowhere in the Bible did we read that for calling them rebels, that's why God punished them. Yeah. We are learning, of course, from that, that they shouldn't do that. Because if we remember very well, God himself had called them rebels. That's number one. Number two, Moses himself had called them rebels too, and no offense was taken. Look at that in Deuteronomy 9.24. Has he called them rebels? Did he ever refer to them as rebels? And no offense was taken? What was the offense here now? That's where, I, that's where I'm going. But let's quickly look at that. He called them rebels and it was just no reproof. Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 24. Ye have been rebellious against the Lord from the day that I know you. He said it, and God did not hold him for that. So it wasn't that he called them rebels, because they were rebels. Yes, sure. He called them the names that they bear. But unfortunately, he called them rebels from heart that is angry. Angered heart. But if you say you are rebels, you need to repent. You are rebels. You are rebelling against God. Unless you repent and they do something like that. There's nothing wrong in that. But when they did this from a provoked spirit and they done it in the public, some people have no shame. They do what they do in the public. They, if it is something about not glorifying God, they do it in the public. If it is to put anybody down, they do it in the public. God decided you did this before the eyes of the children of Israel. It was too much. They should have been examples of faith, hope, and meekness. And they were severely punished. More because these were people that were dignified and eminent people God will not just let that go. God knows what he has invested yes. in each and every one of us. And that's why we say, beware of comparison. Don't compare yourself. The fact that somebody has been around for 29 years, 59 years, 69 years, don't be saying that if he can do that, if she, that's true, what the person is doing may be wrong, but don't compare yourself. God knows who you are. He knows what he has invested in you. That is what he's going to require of your hand. The best of men, they have their failings. Yeah. Even in the graces, we said that uh, Moses was the meekest, meekest man. Even the meekest man on earth can still get to a level where he, he got into the spiritual uh, level that is so hot and God can see from above and God can mark it down to the extent that Moses then prayed, God, uh -uh, have me. when I was reviewing this lesson for the teachers on Friday, I said something like, 
I want to believe it wasn't in the Bible, but perhaps Moses would have said, ah, ah, my father, my God, I didn't know how that happened. How will I not give you glory? How will I, how will I have pushed you aside? I didn't know. You see these people, the way they have pushed me, I did not even know what I said. How I said, did I strike twice? Did I do this? And God said, enough. Don't pray to me about it again. I've decided your case. God knows the frame of our spirit. He knows the temper that are there upon a particular occasion. And whatever we do, that's why God deals with the motive. Yeah. We may be doing certain things that people may be saying one thing or the other, but God knows the motive. Many times some people may commend us. Many people will tell you that what you are doing is right, is okay, is wonderful. But in heaven, your name has already been taken off the book of life. One other important lesson. You know, the nearer we are to God, the more offensive will be our sins or mistakes or errors to God. Can I repeat myself? The nearer we are to God, the more God will not spare any little thing that we want to call little, Shouldn't we call that little? With all that Moses had gone through, just striking, that, that is like, what is that? But to God, how many people have seen God's glory? When God said, no one will ever see me and live. And then because Moses prayed and God honored his prayer and God said, okay, I will show you my back. How many people have prayed like that? Moses. I know the intimacy. I know the fellowship. I know the friendship. I know the extent to which I've taken you in experiences of life. Yes. In you knowing me and I knowing you. Now you want to give me excuse. They provoke you. One other lesson, when our heart is hot, I think that's our last question about how we deal with provocation. When our heart is hot, because people will make your heart hot. When your heart is hot, be careful what you say. You may say things irrevocable, irreversible, with eternal consequence. And again, you know, Learning about this lesson, it humbles me. It just puts me down. It may raise some people up. Stay up there. It puts me down. Why? You know what Moses did? Who wrote the book of Deuteronomy? Who wrote from Genesis to the book of Deuteronomy? Do we know? Our account of today, who wrote it? You see how gentle, how meek, how he wants God's name to be glorified. I missed this, and I don't want this to be out of the Bible. I will pen it down so that you and I can read it, so that you and I can learn from it. The weapon that these people use are very, very sharp weapons. Very sharp weapons. And that is why I don't see anybody and I can't see anybody, if you want to be truthful to yourself, that you are just free. This is a lesson that you just say, look, Lord, I, I, I was addressing the ministers and workers in the prayer room also this morning, and I said, today, I want God, I've prayed, I've cried to God to declare it as a day of mercy. Amen. A day of mercy. Amen. For as many as we want God's mercy, I, I told them, I want number one, number one on the list. I want God's mercy because the weapons that these enemies use, provocation, continuously, murmuring, complaining, 
dishonoring, no help, pushed to the wall, look at the rebels, tried one's patience, stress you till you say things that you say, ah, have I said it? They turn their leaders to rebels. Is there anyone here that has this kind of spirit? Or those of you listening to me on the webcast? God can have mercy upon you today. Yeah. If you want to make heaven, God is ready to help you to make heaven. We can decide that we are not going to chide, that is to express disapproval. You know some people, you can't please them. Nothing pleases them. They express disapproval with everything and anything. Is that the kind of spirit that you have with those that are in authority over you? From now, we want to pray, God, give me the spirit of cooperation. Amen. Give me the spirit of support. Amen. Give me the spirit of prayer. Amen. Give me the spirit of help. Amen. We are all in this wilderness of life together. Yeah. Nobody has got to heaven. The leaders we are talking about, the pastors we are talking about, I can say this anywhere, everywhere, I say it every time, that my name is Isaac Ardigan. Just going to about 18 years now that God has given me the opportunity to be a pastor. And the fact that you are a pastor doesn't change you now to be angelic. You are still Isaac Ardigan. You are still human. Just as we have people in the congregation praying to God to help them, so also must Isaac Ardigan or any ordained uh, uh, minister or unordained minister will have to pray to God to help them. We are all in the same boat. And if you know the kind of situation that leaders are, you will have a separate time that you say, no, this is my separate time to pray for the leaders. Their, their situations are so critical. Their situations are so delicate. But we can pray for them. Amen. We don't want to cause them any, any stress, any problem. There is no excuse for giving excuses. No excuse at all for any excuse not to serve God. God will not take that. God is not going to accept that. Hey, I'm provoked. It's my situation. It's my circumstances. It's my this. It's my that. God will give us a matching grace Amen. for our trials and temptations. Amen. But many times we shun it. It's God that gives it. And the word of God says that he's not going to allow, he's not going to permit any temptation that we cannot overcome. That is his word. So if we as human beings, if I'm failing, let me admit Isaac is the one that has failed. God's word remains the same. Amen. 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 The fact that any leader has failed doesn't mean that, uh, the, well, that word, well, is not true, true, is not this. The word of God is true. Oh, yes. Remains. Amen. In spite of all that has happened and everything, God decided to hold Moses accountable. Accountability. Our accountability is to God. Uh, when God was saying that he did not honor him, I was thinking, did not honor God. Even, uh, I can't, we cannot question God. He knows the heart. He sees the heart. But we can learn a lot from that. Because some people are parading themselves, getting the honor that should go only to God of heaven. And I'm warning such individuals, if you don't change, you may enter into trouble with God. And I pray that you don't get into trouble with God. Amen. Trouble with man is not, not an issue. But when it has to do with God, and you are taking God's honor upon yourself, I am the one. It's me who did it. I did it this way and that way. Who do you think you are? Whose breath? is in his nose rail. May God rebuke all pride. Amen. 
that are raging in the heart of people, thinking they are something, when they are nothing. We are all nothing before God. God is everything. Enough of parading yourself that you are this, you are that. You are nothing. You are nothing. We don't want to be excluded. Yes, it's true. Some people may say, yes, I don't want to be excluded. But you know, not only from heaven, we may be excluded even from good things in life. You see other people making success, you are excluded. Good health, you are excluded. Things natural for everyone is not natural for you. Enjoyment of what the Lord has given, you are not enjoying it. What shall we do with all this? Remembering that actions and words can be irrevocable. Their consequences can be unchangeable. Um, I have a mark on my hand. It's already healed. It's not, nothing happens to it again. But I will never forget when in doing my practical in the trade center, welding two metal together, using the, nose, the nozzle from the um, welding equipment. And instead of welding the weather, I was welding my hand. <laughs> and your place just became white immediately in the workshop at that trade center. That was many, many years ago. I think the point I'm making here is that for people who will look, look closely at me, you will still see the mark. It's healed, but the mark is there. So also are some issues of birth that some of us can get into with God. The consequences that we have to live with. God has forgiven but the consequences. And that alone is enough to cause us to think very well. So if you even pound a, a nail, I read something about you pound a nail into a wall, you, then you decide, oh, this nail is in the wrong place. Let me remove it and go and put it in another place. You, you have made a mistake. And everybody can see there. And that is what we all do um, under some circumstances. One may be able to repair it. One may not be able to repair it. At other times, it may be something that will remain there, not satisfactory. Our lives are just like that. And once we realize that we have made that error, we've made that mistake, we repent immediately. So I have called today a day of repentance. Amen. We restitute, I have called today, a day of restitution. Amen. Even consequences that have dented our lives, consequences that have remained as a mark in our lives. We can, in as much as we still have breath, because the word of God says that in wrath of God, he can also remember mercy. Amen. Our God is a God of mercy. Yes. We can call upon him and say, God, you've got to have mercy upon me. Well, we know we have to pray earnestly, but we also have to take some actions consciously. Self-control is what some of us need. Self-discipline is what some of us need. Self-denial is what men is what some of us need. Be ready to consecrate and separate our lives unto the Lord is what some of us need. And the Lord has given us a lesson like this so that we should fear him. Lest a promise. I think of that. Being left us. God has given us a promise. That there is a rest. With all that you and I are going through here, I have prepared a rest. Amen. Eternal rest. Amen. Enjoyable rest. Amen. Rest forever and ever and ever. Amen. No more pain. Amen. No more sorrow. Amen. No more crying. Amen. No more sighing. Amen. I have prepared for you eternal rest. Amen. However, if you don't fear God, if you don't take heed, some of you may come short. Come short. It doesn't mean you miss it altogether. Come short just simply means you are not to the mark. That's just what it means. To come short means just, just, just a little, just 99.99 will not enter. Who can then make 100%? Who 
without God, without being sober, without all the humility, without all God, I am nothing. God, unless you deliver me, unless you rescue me. Let me close. Before we go on, I need to pray. Open with me. 1 Corinthians. The book of 1 Corinthians. Chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10. Moreover, brethren, from verse 1, I would not that ye should be ignorant. May God deliver us from ignorance. Amen. How that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all, and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, these things were our examples. Are they your example? If they are your example, are you taking correction from that? Or are you still sticking? Still sticking, I'm right. This is what I will do. Come what may. Whatever you are saying is wrong. I'm the one that is right. You are not taking anything from all the example with all that the Spirit of God is doing. To the intent, we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed and fell in one day, three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpent. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now, all these things happened unto them for examples that they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. Amen. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as come unto man. But God is faithful, yes. who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Amen. May God give you an added grace to bear Amen. it. Amen. All these things that we are saying, we've, we've all made wonderful contributions. When they come in reality, when people complain about you, when people lie about you, when people murmur against you, when people criticize you for uh, wrongfully, when people just putting you down, this body doesn't want to take anything like that, naturally. Unless God, and I like that contribution about no excuse. God will not say, don't you see what he did to me uh, as my wife or as my husband or as my children or my parents or my pastor or that person in the church that is always causing problems for all the people. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee Amen. from idolatry. Amen. I speak as to wise men. Amen. Judge ye. Judge it. Be your own judge. Is that true? Is that right? Moses has gone. Yeah. We are here. Murmuring will continue. Complaining will continue. But I pray you will not be that complainer. Amen. I pray you will not be that murmurer. Amen. The spirit is still looking here and there. The devil is still looking for someone to exclude. That is his job. He's listening to all these lessons where it is being taught today. And he's still looking for leaders, for non-leaders, 
to exclude them, but in the name of Jesus. Amen. By the power of the resurrection. Amen. That power that could not hold Christ down, yes. when God's time came for him to rise up yes. and appear before God in your behalf, in my behalf, to start praying for us, that power will keep you. Amen. That power will keep me. We, we make it in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you feel like beginning again with God, just as I am feeling? I'm inviting you to come to the altar and speak to God and call upon God and confess your sins to God, confess your fault to God, confess all those things that you have said in your bedroom, all those things that you have said to your friend, all those complaints, all those murmurings, all those grumblings, God is saying today, I want to set you free. God is saying today, it's a day of mercy. God is saying today, I'm here for you. God is saying today, I love you. If you will confess to me, if you will renounce and genuinely repent, I will deliver you. I will set you free. Lord, have mercy upon my soul. I am a sinner. I have said things I shouldn't have said. I have behaved the way I shouldn't have behaved. I have offended you, God. I have offended the people of God. Have mercy upon me. I have offended your children. Have mercy upon me. I have offended my wife. I have offended my husband. I have offended my parents. I have offended my children. Have mercy upon my soul. I have offended my teachers. Have mercy upon my soul. Today is a day of mercy. Don't let today just pass over your head. Get it sorted. Get it settled. God knows why you did what you did, but His mercy endureth forever. His mercy always available. He has declared today is a day of mercy. Will you take advantage of it? Or will you just let today just pass over you like that? When God is saying, I'm ready to set you free. I'm ready to deliver you. God will answer your prayers. Today is a day of mercy. Today is a day of prayer. To pray through to genuine salvation. To pray through to sanctification. To pray through to Holy Ghost baptism. To pray through more holiness. Help me, O oh Lord. I surrender. Lord, I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. Save me anew. Save me afresh. Save me, O oh Lord. Forgive me my sins, O oh Lord. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. I have sinned with my mouth. I have sinned with my spirit. I have sinned with my soul, with my body. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. He will answer you today. He will set you free today. Today is a day of mercy. Oh Lord, have mercy upon me. I don't want to be excluded. Oh Lord, please don't exclude me. Oh Lord, don't exclude me. I have nowhere to go. I have nowhere to go. Don't exclude me, oh Lord. Put your fear. Put your fear in my heart. Put your fear in my soul. Put your fear in me. Deliver me from my stubbornness. Deliver me from my headiness. Deliver me from my stony heart. Have mercy upon me. Soften me. Lord, please soften me. Let this world soften my heart. Let this world soften my heart. Let this world soften my heart. Have mercy upon me, O oh Lord. Have mercy upon me today. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Have mercy upon me today. Don't pass me by. Don't pass me by. Hear my humble cry. Don't exclude me from Canaan. Don't exclude me from heaven. Please. Put my name back in that book. Put my name back in the book of life. I am sorry for what I've done that made you to remove my name. Put my name back today, O oh Lord. I have resolved 
no longer to linger. I have resolved no longer to linger. I have resolved to follow you. I have resolved to serve you. I want to serve you. I want to follow you. Have mercy upon my heart, O oh Lord. He will answer your prayers. Help me today. Tomorrow may be too late. Tomorrow may be too late. Do it for me today, O oh Lord. Do it for me today. Help me today. Deliver me today. Set me free today. Lord, have mercy upon me. Even the consequences that I'm carrying about, Lord Jesus, I bring them to you. I bring these consequences to you. It is my fault. It is my fault. I cause it for myself. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. I am guilty. Lord, I am guilty as charged. I am guilty. Lord, remove my guilt. Take away my condemnation, O oh Lord. Amen. Save me anew. Save me afresh. Set me free. I am proud, O oh Lord. Take away this spirit of pride. This spirit of pride will kill me. This spirit of pride will kill me. Take it out of my heart. O oh Lord, take it out of my soul. Lord Jesus, I beg you, Lord. I pray to you, Lord. Hear me, O oh Lord. Hear me, O oh Lord. Hear me, O oh Lord. I don't want to get to the level where you say I should not talk to you about it again. I don't want to get to that level. Now I know today is a day of mercy. Today is a day of mercy. Have mercy upon my soul. Pity me, Lord. Pity my state. Pity my situation. Pity my situation. Lord Jesus, save my soul. Humble my heart. Help me, Jesus. He will help you. He will answer. He will hear. Amen. Amen. Today is a day of mercy. And on this day of mercy, on this day of mercy, O oh Lord, search me. Search me. Search me. I thought I was right before. I thought I knew everything before. I thought it's me, 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 me. Now no more me. It's now all about you. It is now all about you. No more me, 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 me. It's now you, 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 Lord. It's all about you. Forgive me where I have taken the glory due to your name. I have taken it upon myself. I have taken it upon myself that I am this, I am that. I know this. Oh, Lord, have mercy upon me. Oh, Lord, set me free. Jesus, pray for me. Let today be my day of salvation. Let today be my day of deliverance. Lord, help me. He will help you. He will help you. Therefore, let us fear. Let us therefore fear. Lest a promise be left us of entering into his rest. Any of you, any of us, should seem to come short of it. Let us fear. Put your fear in my heart. Not the fear of man, but your fear. Put your fear in my heart, O oh Lord. I surrender to you. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I must see you today. I must see you today. Lord Jesus, I must see you. You must help me. You must deliver me. Help me, Jesus. He will help you. He will help you. Open your heart. Open your heart. Don't close your heart. Enough. Enough of closing your heart. Enough of closing your heart. Open your heart to God. I open my heart to you, Lord Jesus. I open my heart to you. I open my heart. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, have mercy upon me. Lord, have mercy upon me. I don't know where this is coming from. Set me free. Heal me. I am sick. I am sick. I am sick. Heal me, O oh Lord. Heal me, Lord Jesus. Heal me, Savior Lord. He's a mighty healer. He will heal your spirit. He will heal your soul. He will heal your body. He will heal you. Heal me, O oh Lord. Help me, O oh Lord. From now on, from today, I resolve. I resolve to do your bidding. 
I resolve to follow you. I resolve to follow you. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. He will help you. He will help you. Confess your sins to him. Confess your sins to him. Stop hiding. Stop hiding. Stop hiding. You cannot hide from him. Stop hiding. Expose all to him. Expose everything to him. He will save you. He will help you. He will set you free. Amen. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. I realize. I now realize all that I've done. I now realize the way that I've flooded everything. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. Mighty fortress. Our God is a mighty fortress. Our God is a mighty fortress. He will fight your battle. He will fight your battle. He will win your battle. He will win your battle. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus, not to forget myself. Help me not to take matters into my own hand. Help me not to take matters into my own hand. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I must not lose heaven. I must make heaven. If you lose heaven with all that you are going through right now, you will be the most miserable. You will be the greatest loser. I must not miss heaven. Even if I miss everything down here. Even if I miss everything down here. I must not miss heaven. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Don't exclude me. Forgive me. Hear me. Amen. 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 He will answer. Oh, Lord, forgive me. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, forgive me. Yes, I was pushed. And I allowed myself to be pushed. Now I am in trouble. Now I am in problem. Now, oh Lord, I run to you. I now run to you. Have mercy upon me, oh Lord. Have mercy upon me, Lord Jesus. He will answer your prayers. He will do it for you. Amen. No excuses for making excuses. No excuse for making excuses. No excuse that will be acceptable to God for failing him, for not serving him acceptably. There is no excuse acceptable to him. Therefore, Lord, forgive my excuses. I have been given so many excuses. I have been given so many excuses. Oh, Lord, deliver me from these excuses. Deliver me from my excuses. Help me today. Help me now. Amen. He will answer. He will hear you. Determine from now on, from today, oh Lord, I will serve you. I will follow you. I will do your bidding. I will surrender to your will. I will no more be stubborn. I will no more be stony hearted. I will no more complain. I will no more more more. I will no more grumble. Give me the grace. Give me the grace. Help me, O oh Lord. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord Jesus. He will help you. He will help you. Pray and be sure that you nailed it down with him. Nail it down with God before you leave your knees. Nail it down. Nail it down. Nail it down. Get into agreement with him. Self-control, self-discipline, sacrifice. Oh Lord, help me. I give my life to you. I give myself to you. I give my heart to you. I give my ears to you. I give my eyes to you. I give my mouth to you. I give my legs to you. All to Jesus. I surrender. He will help you. We will make heaven at last. By his grace, by his power, he will help you. God bless you as you pray.